Hey, this is Jim with the Real Estate Expert Online. Thanks again for joining me, folks. Before we dive into this segment, I want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel for upcoming events and training. Also, be sure to click on the bell so you can get notified each time we have a new video that we post. Please be sure to mention comments down below. I'd love to get connected with you and answer any questions that you may have pertaining to real estate. So thanks again. So let's get started. Um, a lot of, this is towards real estate agents, whether you're new or you've been in the business for a long time, you struggle to get new leads and business for yourself. That's why so many real estate agents fall out of the business more than they stay in. So I want to share with you some training and prospecting that I taught myself as well as learned along the way. And I'm going to share it with you today. So this is going to be a real big game changer. So be sure to take notes and also check back and watch this video as much as you can and learn as much as you can. And I'm going to break this up into a few different segments. So these videos aren't so long for you. And that way you can plug in and watch them in order um, that they're received. So, so what do you do? You, you just got started in real estate or maybe you just been struggling as a real estate agent and you know, every so often you pop one off and get a closing and, and get a payday, but so much inconsistency. So let me share with you what I did. <clears throat> now, obviously a lot of people may talk to you about, you know, putting out postcards, doing mail outs, doing letters, um, and spending a lot of money on marketing yourself. And that's all fine and dandy, but if you're struggling like I was, you're financially strapped. You don't have a whole lot of money uh, to be throwing out there and hoping that something comes back to, to get you a paycheck. So this is what I did. You know, when I first started, I didn't know hardly anything, but I did know one thing. I knew where to find the properties and what to say when I got these sellers on the phone. So here's what I did. So first of all, back when I started, you know, they had this thing called a newspaper, right? And there was a section in real estate section that you could see a list of for sale by owners wanting to sell their property. So what I did is I just went down the list and I started on a Sunday evening. And I went through the newspaper and I blocked out a lot of sections of a particular area that um, I wanted to prospect to obtain listings. So here's what I said, and this is important. You might wanna write this down. This is a script that you want to keep with you whenever making phone calls to for sale by owners. And it goes something like this. So ring, ring, the seller answers the phone. Then what you say is, hi, this is Jim with ABC Realty. And I was calling to see if your property was still available. And then you pause and wait to, to hear back from the seller, okay? So they might say, I'm not interested in, paying a real estate commission, or they may say something derogatory, just something off the wall, or they might say yes. And then you want to confirm with them. So are you the homeowner? Yes. Okay, great. So what I'm doing is I'm working with a lot of buyers that are coming into the area and would like to take a look at some properties. And I saw that you had this one for sale and it kind of fits the script for, for what my buyers are looking for. So I'd like to see if you'd be willing to work with the realtor, first of all. And if you are, I'd love to set up a time where I could come out and preview the property and see if it's something one of my buyers would like. And then you pause and wait to see if you have some positive feedback from the seller. Most of the time they'll say, yeah, yeah, sure. Or they might say, well, what is your commission? And then what I tell them is, well, that's negotiable, but if I can get you what you want, would you be willing to work with me? And then you want to get the yes. Okay, great. So what day and time works for you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? 
and then you pin down a time. Okay. So then the next step is that you'll say, okay, great. I got you down between, you know, I got you down at five o'clock on Monday. I'll give you a call prior to coming out just to confirm, uh, take down my name and number. And if something comes up on your end, please give me a courtesy call as well. Fair enough. Okay, great. Thanks. I look forward to seeing you soon. And then you hang up. Then I go on to the next one and the next one and the next one. And what I want to do is block out at least three to five more properties with sellers so I can view all those properties within, you know, probably I give it like a half hour space in between or maybe 45 minutes in between and also make sure these properties are pretty close in proximity as far as location goes. You don't want to be driving all over town and driving, you know, 30 minutes to one, and then you got to go back to another property that might be 45 minutes away. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, if you can keep it in the same neighborhood, that's awesome, but it doesn't always work out that way, but, you know, keep it in a 10 or 15 mile radius and you'll be fine. So now you got it blocked out, okay? And then obviously when you were on the phone with them, you wanted to confirm the address, make sure uh, you got their name down, the phone number is already listed in the newspaper, and you're good to go, okay? Now this day and age, the newspaper may not be the way to go because obviously there's social media outlets, there's Facebook Marketplace, there's Craigslist, and a number of other resources, including Zillow, Trulia, that you can obtain this information from and get the seller on the phone. So gather the information, and what I do, is I put it on a little three by five card. Okay, so I put it on three by five card and I got it at the ready and I wrote down my little notes and I got the time put on the card and I'm good to go. So the day arrives and I'm going out to the property. I've called, confirmed, everybody says, great. I'm looking forward to seeing you and away I go. So once I approach the property, obviously you wanna dress in a nice attire according to what other real estate professionals dress like in your city, state, and or town. Then when you approach the door, you automatically compliment them with something. You know, you greet them, give them a nice firm handshake, take your shoes off at the door just out of respect. And then you want to say, great, Sally. Thanks for allowing me into your home. Why don't you give me a tour? So you let them take you on a tour. And while you're on that tour, you got your little clip pad and your three by five card attached and you're jotting down notes, okay? Fill out all the information about the property and let them do most of the talking. A lot of information is gonna be given and gathered in this first initial meeting and it's very important that you key in on a lot of factors, one of which you're looking for their pain. Why are they selling? If they don't tell you, you want to ask them those questions. They're called WOPEN questions. So these are questions that start with a W. You're going to ask them, when are you moving? Why are you selling? What are you asking for the property? Things of that nature. So you don't have to do it in any particular order as long as you get all the information before you leave. So you're touring the home. You're asking questions and you want to drop some questions in their mind that they may not have thought about when they put their house up for sale. So one of the questions is, hey, do you have a flyer of information about your property that I could take with me? That would be great because I can share this with our buyers as well. And if they don't say, well, that's okay. If you don't mind, would it be all right if I take some photos of your property and then I can upload them and send them over to my prospective buyers? And like, yeah, sure. And so you're going to take some really nice photos. You know, in today's day and age, we have the camera phones, which are awesome. Well, back when I started real estate, we had the film that you actually had to go to the store and develop. I know I'm showing my age, right? So, but you do what you got to do. So, 
now with today's technology, we really take advantage of all this stuff. And so you're snapping photos and you want to take pictures of the outside and you're taking photos just like you would if you were going to obtain the listing. Now, as you're finishing up, you're going to ask them some more questions. You're going to ask them, where did you arrive at your price, may I ask? And you have to say it in that way because they'll take some defense if you come at them in a different way. Like if you say, well, where'd you arrive at this price? You know, you don't want to go there. So you want to just say, hey, where did you arrive at your price, if you don't mind me asking? And then let them speak out. And then write down the information if you feel it's helpful for future use. And then you're going to ask them, do you have a property seller's disclosure by chance? And a lot of them might not even know what that is. And they'll say, no, what's that? Oh, well, it's a disclosure that pretty much spells out everything that you know or don't know about your property. And it also protects you in, against liability issues. So you're kind of throwing that in their head and saying, wow, I didn't know about that, you know? So you want them to, to really see where they may be missing out and where they could benefit by using your services, okay? So I hope this helps as we go through the process. Now, the next segment, I'll be talking about follow-up. That's a key ingredient. Stay tuned, folks. I'll see you on the other side. And check out the next segment. I'll have a link down below. Thank you. Bye.